And we are pleased to welcome back to Sports Spectrum, my friend TC Stallings. TC, what's going on, my friend? Well, hanging in there, man. Hanging in there, trying to trying to keep up with what's going on with 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 COVID and the world, and just um, find my place in it, and you know, do what God got me, you know, to do within it, man. How about yourself? We're doing the same thing, man. Just trying to figure out how to navigate this world, and it's a crazy time. Certainly, 2020 has been unlike anything we've seen. And I know for you, you mentioned COVID-19. For you, it was really personal because it took your took the life of your mom, I know, yeah. uh, from COVID complications. And obviously, our condolences. Um, tell us about how you were processing that and kind of moving forward and maybe a little bit about your mom. Uh, well, it came out of nowhere. Um, it really did. You know, my mother, she was she was already dealing with some underlying health issues. And that's the reason why COVID COVID was able to take her so fast, you know, it, it literally happened in a matter of four days from when she got, you know, fully uh, officially diagnosed, you know, with it, you know, there was a chance she had had it for a few days, you know, but she had already been dealing with some stuff, but it, it came out of nowhere. We were kind of talking about her, her diet plan. Cause she was, she was a little heavy for her height. And uh, she just, she just wanted to get healthier. And that was like her plan. My mother was, you know, uh, 73 years old. And so her plan was to, to, to get healthy and, and, you know, just live out the next, I don't know, God's God's will, 20 or so years, feeling better, feeling lighter, feeling healthier. And so we were kind of working through that and getting a new diet plan and all the different things. And I was really excited for her to finally go after that. Next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call that she, you know, she says, I got the virus, you know, everybody needs to start praying. And I had been seen on TV where everybody was, you know, like, you know, people were dying, of course. So that's scary. But I also was seeing people her age and older pulling through. And you got to remember, this is back in like, you know, April, March, April, where we didn't know a whole lot about it. And you're seeing, you know, I'm thinking she's got a great chance of pulling through. I'm seeing these older people pulling through. And then I see the report where they say, hey, you know, if you got underlying underlying um, issues already, your chances aren't that great. And then we start getting calls from doctors. And uh, when I finally got the one call where they said, um, unfortunately, your mom's not going to make it. That's just a call you just don't want to get. And I just refused to believe it until I finally got that next call that she was gone, man. And so it was tough, but I told her, I told the world immediately. I said, listen, um, my, the pain of losing my mother is superseded by the joy and knowing that she knew Jesus. And because of that, I see her again. And, uh, the Holy Spirit basically just held me up on that. And, and, um, and I've just been trying to continue to honor her ever since, you know, so. My mother was always somebody that wanted to, me to do something to make her smile and make her proud. And I'm going to continue to do that um, even now. That had to be eye-opening in the sense of just the COVID-19 discussion. Like a lot of people, it's still going on right now as you and I record this interview. On what, on a, is it really that dangerous? Is it, do we really have to be doing this and that? And it's become very political as well. Uh, and trying to get facts, but you lived through this with your mom. So it's yeah. obviously very real. What was sort of the mindset initially when you saw COVID kind of come to the forefront in mid-March to the point when your mom passed? I believe that was in April at some point. Yeah, she, she passed April 15th. When it first, when it, when it very first hit, I was like everybody else. I think everybody was trying to figure out like, what, what is going on? I mean, it, it literally was just like a Okay, I've never I've never seen anything this uh, like this before. And then you start, you know, they start talking about the the, the pandemics from from yesteryear. And you start doing your research, and you start to see like this could be like that. So everything in the beginning was what this could be, what this could be, and and everybody's kind of being normal. When you start to see people dying, that's when it just got like okay. Me and my wife and my family started doing every precaution that you could do. You know, we, we were that couple or that family that's gloved up, masked up. Like we were like that right off the bat, didn't want to touch anything and, and all of that. And then I was calling my mom and calling my family, checking on other states. And when you, I think the thing that really opened your eyes is when you look at the map and that thing started to spread. Like when it was just in a couple of places, it was just like, man, I hope they get that under wraps. When you saw the whole nation go red, like mm -hmm. it's touching every. I'm like, man, I've never seen anything like this before. And so it was just, now you glued to the to the news every single day. This this actually reminded me of back when like, you know, with the 9-11 times and times that we're at war or things like that, where you can't watch or do anything else. You just, you just, you're glued to the TV like every day and you're looking for new information and you just keep this, this death and that death. Now you're warning family members. And I remember calling my people saying, listen, y'all, 
make sure y'all are cleaned up, make sure y'all stay away. And I was re relaying everything that I was getting out of California because, you know, we we were kind of like really one of the hot spots right away. Early so was, on, yeah. Yeah, so I was telling everybody back in Ohio what to do. And and then, uh, and then like I said, man, when I got that call that people were catching it because my, my stepfather caught it as well, you know. And then, uh, you know, I lost my grandmother four weeks later right after my mom, by the way. Mm -hmm. So... It was just, it was just, man, it was just one of those things where I started to just like, all right, Lord, what, what am I to, this ain't surprising you. So what am I to do within this? And how do I navigate the situation and have people focus more on you than the chaos that's going on around the country when it comes to this? I have to imagine, and condolences on your grandmother as well. I don't think I knew that. Uh, yeah. Having done the research, I knew about your mom, but faith has to be a driving force here in trying to move forward because and I've talked to many people who've experienced death on a, on a deeper level than I've ever experienced. And I know it's coming because we're all going to have to deal with it at some point. And I don't know how people grieve and process the loss of a loved one without faith. I just yeah. don't know how they do it. And so what has that been like for you to have to lean on? You've, had, you've been a Christian for a long time, a follower of Christ that has to have played a part in you being able to move forward. It played a major part. It literally was all I had because when, when it came down to my mother, when I started getting the warnings that this might happen and I had to really just be face to face with the like, oh my God, like I might lose my mom right now. And, uh, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about it, you know, and I actually said, if this, is, if this happens to me, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like in my mind, I'm thinking like, I've, I've never, you know, I've never, I don't know how to prepare for something like that. I've never lost the closest person to me in my life. The interesting thing is when it happened, I experienced an amazing amount of peace. And mm -hmm. this is where a scripture, you know, we, we always talk about as Christians, we talk about uh, the peace that surpasses understanding. You can't talk about that a whole, whole lot from an experience standpoint unless you experience it. And it's not necessarily always pleasant when you experience it. You know how like maybe you're in a financial hole and all of a sudden you get this piece about it and you can say, hey, man, I don't have any money, but I got peace. And that, but so that's a more pleasant kind. But this death stuff, when my mother passed, uh, I, I was ready to fall on the ground and just cry and just be. But I got this piece that 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 literally I didn't even understand that I did not cry. I, I was very, very sad. But I ended up picking up the phone and calling my siblings. Most of my siblings, if not all of them, do not know Jesus as their savior. Yeah. You know, in turn, and, it, and so it's just like I started talking to them about how to handle, you know, my mother's past and reminding them she did know Jesus for a fact. We can see her again. If you want to see her again, you got to get your life right, like those kinds of things. And then also, I'm looking at people looking at me who know me. Um, I mean, like I said, I'm not the most I'm not the most pop Michael Jordan or whatever, but there's some people who know who I am. So if they're sure. following me and they're seeing how I handle it. This is an opportunity to show people the peace that surpasses understanding. This is an opportunity to show people where the scripture says we don't grieve like the world, but we have hope. So I have to be able to show that, you know, and um, on my own, I can't do it. And so the, the Holy Spirit gave me the ability to just, he, he held me up for these reasons, I believe to this day to show the world what it's like to have the Holy Spirit in your heart and remind you that she's with Jesus and she wouldn't come back here if she could. And also that you got people that need to see the strength of God shown in you. And you got siblings that don't know the Lord and you need to be able to show your, uh, show them what it's like. So all of that because of the Lord, not me, I was able to display. And so that right there, man, I'm very, very grateful for just because I just don't know what I would do if I didn't have that every single day. I'm just down. I'm depressed. I'm missing my mom. I'm, I don't know what to do. I, so, yeah. So because of the Lord, I don't have to worry about that. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. T.C. Stallings is our guest here today on Sports Spectrum. He's an actor, former Louisville Cardinals running back. And I know that that plays a role in this new documentary that you have. It's released on demand back in late June, early July, and it's out there now for people to go check out. It's called 24 Counter. So let's talk about that. What is 24 Counter and tell us about the documentary? Well, my, uh, my, my, my fellow running backs out there, uh, Aaron <laughs> Lyman, shout out to the, to the awesome linemen in the world that make the whole story. <laughs> the big uglies. 24 Counter, right? <laughs> 24 Counter. <laughs> 
very popular. I mean, it's it's a it's a name for a counter a counter play. You know, step one way, go the other way. And um, in in my Louisville Cardinal football career, I'm known for one major play that I ran against University of Kentucky uh, to beat them in overtime back in 2000, and uh, it put me on the map. It was my first game as a starting running back at Louisville, and it happened to be the biggest game of the year. We, we used to, That's when we used to start the season off against UK. Now we play them at the end, but we used to play them right off the bat. And so we beat them in overtime, and everybody, you know, you know, I was on the map. You know, I had 144 yards and, and two touchdowns and the game winner, 24 counter we ran. And, but people didn't know the story behind that run. Like, literally, everything from, my, from age 12, leading up to me being a junior in college culminated with that run. And that's wow. the cool thing about being able to tell this story, this documentary and watch me from 12 years old run up to that moment where I made that run. And you'll see that, yeah, we beat, we won the game, but there was so much more significance to that moment and everything that led up to it uh, that will inspire people when they see it. It's basically my testimony. I love it. We don't want to give it all away. We want people to go right. watch the documentary, obviously, but people yeah. can find it where? Where's the best place for them to look for that, find it, and maybe it'll be released in other places. I know you were not yeah. talking about that uh, yeah. before we started recording. Yeah, the best place right now, I, I try to make it as easy as possible for people to see it. Just go to my website, www.tcstallings.life, L-I-F-E, and then you will see all the, the tabs to be able to watch it right there in your face. I made it very, very easy. And then uh, there's a chance that you can, you should be able to go uh, to Amazon right now um, and on Prime and watch it right now, um, if not in other places. So that's what we've been working on. And nice. so uh, I just wanted to get, you know, to a point to where anybody anywhere can uh, hear my testimony. And at this stage of the game, you know, with, with, with what's happening in our world, you know, if I was to check out of this earth right now, I would love to be able to know that, man, I got my testimony out to the world. You know, that's what we're called to do as Christians is tell people about Jesus. And so my very first debut project as a writer, producer, director happens to be a testimony about Jesus. Now I can do some other stuff, but I've gotten that done. It's out there. The whole world can see it. So yeah, my website or go to Amazon and, uh, you know, check it out. I love it. TCStallings.life is the website. This has got to be weird for you as an actor because a lot of people would know you from the movies Courageous and certainly from War Room, which went all the way mm -hmm. to number one at the box office in its second mm -hmm. week of release in 2015. Such a great movie, War Room on Prayer. A lot of people would know you got you from those two movies, but now you have other projects that you're working on and we're in a pandemic. So this has got to be a weird yeah. time as an actor in the movie world and trying to see projects come out and then trying to get ready to get ready for more projects. It's, it's a yeah. weird time. It's, it's crazy. The moment, like when you asked the question earlier about like, what, what are you doing? Like, how were you handling March and April? When California announced the shutdown, like we, yes. you know, we, we, were, we were the first state to do that. Yep. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. Like you can't leave your house. And that's when I was remastering and trying to redo this documentary and make it something that I can put on TV. And I'm like, you can't go anywhere. You can't, like, you can't go anywhere and nobody can come here. So I was like, man, how, like how? And then I'm like, and then the, the industry shut down and I'm just like, man, everything that I do is revolving around other people, everything. So literally you're telling me I can't, I can't even, I can't do anything with my career. I can't go speak anywhere. I can't go audition for anything. I, yeah. We were straight up, flat out, like shut down. And so I'm just like, wow. So then you see, obviously the industry pivots and start doing more online stuff and digital stuff. And that's another reason why I'm just like, you know, then my mother passes and I say to myself, oh, I will go crazy in, in here without a vision, without a purpose. So I prayed a lot, like, Lord, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in a box and people are dying. There's this pandemic. I can't move. What do you want me to do? And that's when I really went hard at remastering that documentary. I was like, you know what? I'm getting my testimony out. Like, time's winding up, man. Let me get my testimony out. And so that's kind of how I handled it. And I started saying, like, you know what? Let me just focus on being a content creator because I can get stuff out quicker. I don't have a whole lot of people telling me what I can and cannot do. And uh, so now I'm carrying that momentum even now into just continuing to 
create my own projects. You know, I, I dream it. I think about it. I throw it up to the Lord, see if he'll authenticate it. Like, yeah, do it. And then boom, I'm going. And uh, so I'll start small with something like this documentary and we'll grow from there. Yeah, it's interesting times, man. It'll be be fun to see where the Lord shows you and, and directs you and takes you with wherever you end up, whether it's movies or TV or producing online stuff. It'll be lots of fun to watch. Again, the website to check out the new documentary, tcstallings.life. You're from Ohio, and you yeah. said you played college ball at Louisville, and so, so you spent a lot of time there, too. We've seen a different world, as we talked about in 2020, from the standpoint of race and social justice, the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and in Louisville, what happened to Breonna Taylor. I'm curious for you as a black man, how you processed all this as a follower of Christ, as a black man, and just seeing all this just come to, come to a head. Well, you know, I may have an unpopular opinion on all this, and I'm totally fine with that because it's based on scripture and it's based on my faith in, in God. At the end of the day, I know that the racial stuff exists. It's existed for a long time. I know that there are some evil hearts out there. We've seen that with what happened to George Floyd and all of these. And, these, and I don't think it's going nowhere. I think there will always be you know, people that are that, that will be willing to take another life, that, that will be willing to hate somebody else because of their color. And this is why I don't want to put my faith too much in how big we can protest. I, I'm, if the Lord says protest, I say protest. We see what happened when Martin Luther King did it. We wouldn't be here without these protests. So if the Lord say do it, you do it. My point is, I know better than to put my faith, my complete whole faith and trust in what we can do as human beings, yeah. because we don't change hearts. We don't change, you know, we don't, it, 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 as far as the heart change, man, that's, that's a God thing. So for me, it's like, okay, whatever I can do on this earth, the only thing I will say is whatever actions I take, I want them to be God led actions. I don't want to be emotional and I don't want to be bandwagony either. I'm going to protest if the Lord says protest. I will go with this group and support it if the Lord says do it. I will do all of those things, but I'm running it through the Lord. So that's my first thing, because that way, if anything happens to me or my family, I know it was ordained. If I get shot and killed trying to protest or something like that, while well, I prayed about it, I was sure that I was supposed to go do it, and I did it. Um, at the same time, I also don't want um, to allow myself to feel like the world can control what happens with me or to me, even when it comes to opportunities. It, I am the... I'm not worried about, uh, and I say this like straight up, whether it's a black man or a white man or any, whoever's in charge of, of so-called making a decision or when it comes to me, no, you don't have that kind of control. God determines what happens to me. So I, I don't, I don't want to get into the color thing where I'm going to like live my life accepting uh, the systemic racism that you know is out there. I'm going to say, guess who's above the system? Mm. God is. So God, hey, there's some systemic racism over here. There may be a, a white man or somebody who don't want me to get this here. They may be a Chinese man, whatever the, the, the racial thing that doesn't want this black man to get it. What does he want? You can't, your racism isn't greater than God's blessings and his purpose. That's how I live. And that now, does that mean you give up the fight? No, because in scripture, we see we're supposed to fight against injustices and racism and all of that. We've got to do it under God's lead. But in terms of me living with an acceptance of there's, that, that people can actually stop God's purpose for my life, you can't. And that's what gives me the peace to keep living through this. So I say, Lord, you got this systemic racism out here. You got you know people hating out here. You got people willing to take your life out of here. Uh, Lord, what do you want me to do within this? Like, what, what, how, how are you going to lead me to navigate in spite of all of that? Because they can't, you're greater than all of that. And then I trust that. So I don't have to live, you know, in fear. And I don't have to live in thinking that just because of my color, it, I can't rise to whatever I need to rise to. That happens when you leave God out of the picture and you just try to fight it just as a black man. And I'm going to win because that's very encouraging for people to hear that. But I think what's more encouraging is in spite of my color, God says, I will lead TC to do anything that I need him to do as long as he's following me. And nobody can stop that, whether you want him to get there or not. 
that's that's how I roll. And that's the biblical way to roll. So that's the way I've been navigating it. I'm sensitive to everything that happened. I want to see justice, you know, for, you know, Breonna Taylor, uh, for Ahmaud Arbery, you know, for George Floyd and for all of that, because they deserve that justice. But yeah. as far as the change that we need as black people and all of that, I, I'm gonna, I would be willing to fight for all. It's, 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 the, it's what God would want, he, you know, when you're oppressed and all those kinds of things. But my point is the overall mentality that I see when you're looking online is that there's nothing that we can do or, or there's only one way to do it, which is to just go and just go take it and go fight it. I'm like, you know what? There is a play for this, but, a, but, but Lord wants to play. Lord, you tell me what to do. And he can't be stopped. So I'm gonna, I want the plan from my coach, from my heavenly coach. Lord, what's the play? And we're going to go. So that's how, that's how I navigate what's going on. Has it helped uh, in terms of conversations, you know, people like myself, you know, middle-aged, 40-year-old dude, white dude who never has experienced racism before, being able to have a conversation with you, reaching out to you, certainly private conversations, of course, too, uh, just to learn, to listen, to understand, to lament all of those words that you hear. Has that increased for you and, and been a good opportunity for you to kind of share with others kind of your experiences and how great God really truly is even through this? I think for me, it's interesting, you know, my, my, my closest friends and I, I've got white friends, but I have friends of all races, you know, um, yeah. even my, you know, my, my next door neighbors, you know, are a Mexican and, and they, they, their kids graduated, you know, I go over there and, you know, we talked to, talk to them about, you know, celebrating how we, how we have to do the weird uh, celebrations with the pandemic and everything. I, I, no one really wants to talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. You can kind of get that, but no one wants to really, really talk about it. So I think for me is, okay, I have a little bit of a platform. I'm going to use that platform because I know there are people out here sitting there, everybody's sitting at home like, how do I, how do I talk to black people about this? You know, you got your, your, your white friends wondering if they should say something and, and they're wondering how you feel about the whole thing. Again, I'm just like, I think people with platforms um, where you, you turn on your TV and you want to see this person, if you're a Christian, you should say something that show people how to biblically handle the situation. I think that's our number one responsibility as Christians. What, no matter what your color is, show people how to biblically handle the, handle the situation. Um, so me, I'm more. Fo I'm not just focused on being black. I'm focused. I'm focused on being a black Christian. And the reason for that is because that's what what supersedes my color is my affiliation with Jesus. So I'm a Christian, you know, and so what should I be doing as a Christian? You know, this Christian happens to be black. So I'm dealing with things other people aren't dealing with. Well, there's a game plan for that, you know? So I use my platform, like what we're doing now and other things to just put it out there, whether people want to talk to me about what's going on or not. I feel my responsibility is to talk about how Jesus might want us to handle this based on scripture and do my best to live that out. But I'm sensitive to the fact that there's some people who don't go by scripture and that's where conversations get difficult because they don't want to read scripture and wait. They see what the Holy Spirit has to say. They want to go and, and do some actionable things that they can control. And that's where the rub comes in because we don't get the lead if you're following Jesus. You got to wait for him. And that waiting, people tired of waiting. You know, so there's a balancing act there. People are like, we've been waiting for years. I'm tired. Let's go. But I got to be on God's timetable and, um, and just go at, the, go at his pace. As we wind down, TC, I know you mentioned to me before we started recording about clear play and uh, the importance of being a part of what clear play is. Uh, I did not have this on my on my prep, but I think it's kind of important to, to share with people listening, especially our audience who are followers of Christ, who love sports, what exactly clear play is. And I think it's kind of a needed thing in society today. Can you share a little oh, bit about clear play? For sure, man. I mean, everybody who knows me knows I came out to Hollywood with the intent of being a uh, a, a clean entertainment type of actor, you know, and that doesn't mean everything I do is faith-based, but it means that everything I do will be clean so that families can watch it and it doesn't dishonor God, you know, you know, um, and so I've been out here going on nine years now, and when I found out about Clear Play, I found out about Clear Play like about 19 years ago, where, mm. you know, you can, you can uh, literally download the app it, you know, and it's really more so of an extension that you that you get on the Chrome browser, 
and you can literally filter out like they they filter out all the content that may be objectionable to families all the cuss words any nudity anything like that and maybe there's a movie that you watch and there's one or two scenes that you're like oh wish that wasn't in there i don't want my family to see that or hear that you can hit the they've already got that scene selected and you can press hear it not hear it see it not see it just with a, a move and then when you play the film it seamlessly moves through it without messing the film up and i absolutely love that i've been doing that for years so i ran into the ceo recently about a year or two ago and we talked about me joining the team because we realized people didn't necessarily know about it and so i'm helping tell people about this awesome service called clearplay so it just filters movies on amazon right now but now they're going to be on netflix as well so you can watch a movie with your family and sit, before you watch it and this happens so fast Take yeah. a few minutes to go through all our, like we filtered out everything and we got it all nice and neat in categories. You want, you don't want your kids to see that. You don't want your family to see that. Take it out, hit play and you're watching. And so with everything going digital right now, who knows how long we're going to be in the house watching so many movies and TV shows. Um, you can go to clearplay.com and we have all those same shows and same movies and you can make it more family friendly for your family. So I'm really excited to be working with them now. That's good. Clearplay.com is that website. And then you mentioned your website for your documentary, tcstallings.life, tcstallings.life to learn more. TC, thanks, brother. This is great. Great to connect again with you. Uh, I want to encourage people to go listen to our first conversation from the podcast about a year or two ago where you gave your whole testimony and shared sort of the background of how you came to faith in Christ. It's a really great story. And just appreciate you, brother. Thanks for being a voice uh, and a light. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. And um, like I said, for all your listeners, um, Plan on God's Team was a book where all this stuff started. We basically took that and adapted it with the film. So Plan on God's Team was the lesson. And then the film, 24 Counter, was me living out the lesson. That's why I like mm -hmm. the two things together. So enjoy that. Spread it. I just want to get my testimony out. I want to thank you, Jason, for helping me to, to share my testimony with the world. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Okay. All right.